How's it going, everybody? It is Ethan, or Unknown Coder, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Build Twitter. We are on episode 33. In this episode, we go ahead and make it so we can actually go to the next register modal by clicking on the next button. So we build that next button. We also make sure that it's all valid and good to go. So let's go ahead and hop into VS Code, and I'll show you guys how we did this. So let's go ahead and hop back into VS Code, and let's start building out the next button that's going to allow us to go to the next step, only if we filled out all of these steps. So now that we're back in VS Code, we're going to hop in here and inside of our components of our register we're going to make a new folder and we're going to call this register next button and it's going to have specific logic for um, the register modal so that's why i'm building in here sure we probably could have built this differently but it is what it is this is also going to use style components so let's go ahead and make a new file i'm just going to call this register next button dot tsx and we're going to close out of this. So now we're going to go ahead and import styled from styled dash components. And then we are going to say export const um, styled next button. Honestly, I could probably just call this register next button, but I'm going to keep it as this for now. We can always go back and refactor styled dot button. And we are going to use our back ticks and we are going to build this out. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and just do the basic stuff. So our width is going to be 100% of the parent. Our height is going to be 52 pixels. And the reason behind this is this is the height of our button on Twitter. We're going to have a color of white. This will probably be changed later. We're going to have a font size of 17 pixels. Again, this is what Twitter uses and a background color of black to start out. So this is kind of just like the default Twitter colors. And then we're going to go into our interfaces. So just our global interfaces, and we're going to make ourselves a new interface. So export const, and this is going to be styled button or styled next button props. And inside here, we'll have active, which is Boolean. This will have do, do, do export interface. So it will be active Boolean. We'll have theme, which will be our theme. This is going to be how we get all the information about colors. And we're also going to have a color string, which tells them what color we want. So let's go ahead and import this into our next button. So import, and we are going to import styled next button props. And now what we want to do is go ahead and throw that inside here. So styled next button props, and then we can go ahead and make some changes. So we want this to be dynamic based on whether or not it is active or inactive. And it's only going to be active if we have all the data correct. So color height is fine. Font size is fine. Let me move some things around here. Font size is fine, but we want to change the background color and a couple other things. So background color, instead of just being black, we're gonna use our props. So props like so. And then we're gonna say props.color is equal to blue. So if we want this button to be blue, then the color is going to be props.theme.colors.blue. Or otherwise, it's going to be props dot colors or dot theme dot colors dot black. So either we are going to specify that we want this button to be blue, and those are going to be the buttons that actually send data, or we're not going to specify and it's just going to be black. Next, we want opacity. So the opacity is also going to be based on props. So props and this one is going to say props.active. So is this button active? If it is active, we're going to have 100% opacity. Otherwise, we're going to have half opacity. So it's going to be slightly see-through whenever it is disabled or inactive. We're going to have a border radius of about 50 pixels. And finally, we're going to have a cursor. Again, we only want the cursor active if the button is actually clickable. So we'll use our props again, props, props.active. And if they are active, 
it's going to be pointer and if it's not active it'll just be auto which is kind of like the default non uh auto or whatever you want to call it so i believe that should be everything for register next button now we need to go ahead and throw this into our register modal so next we're going to go ahead and put this inside of our register form one so let's go ahead and go into register form one pop it up and now underneath of our um, inputs, but below the content, we are going to go ahead and say, oops, styled next button. And we are going to have a couple of things in here. So we're going to have disabled is going to be equal to not button active. And this is going to be something that we need to set up in a second, our color. For this one is going to equal black because the first one is black on twitter we're going to have active equal to and this is going to be button active and finally we are going to have our on click and this is simply just going to print out something for the time being and it's going to say console.log and we'll say go to the next page. We're going to go ahead and do one of these. And then in here we'll have next because that's what it's going to be doing. So we need to do one last thing inside of our register form here. We need a state to keep track of whether or not the button is active or not. So let's go ahead and say const button active and set button active is equal to use state boolean and this is going to start out as false so we don't want the button active whenever we start so if we save and actually pop back over here you can see that we cannot click the button if i refresh it doesn't let us click it doesn't pop anything up so now what we want to go ahead and do is inside of our use effect we'll go ahead and set um, whether or not it should be um, actually set up or not. And I'm also going to change a little bit out here as well. We're going to get rid of this register step one state because we do not need it. And we're actually going to go ahead and grab the, um, the state from Redux because that'll help us out as well. So we're going to go ahead and say const or import. And we're going to import use selector use selector from react redux and we're also going to import our root state from our store and now i'm going to go ahead and import that state so i'm going to say const and i'm just going to say register state is equal to use selector and then this is going to have our state which is our root state and we're going to go ahead and say state.register. I could have just said state, it is what it is. We don't need update user because we have gotten rid of that. And now instead of step one state, uh, we can say register state here just because, um, although it's gonna print twice now, so we probably don't need this anymore. We are going to be listening for changes in register state and now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say if register state dot dob is valid. So if the date of birth is valid and um, register state dot email is valid and register state dot first name is valid. Maybe. And register state dot last name is valid if all of these are valid then we will go ahead and say set button active to true otherwise else set button active to false so we will set the button to false every single time so now this is essentially what we would need to get done so now if i go ahead and refresh hopefully there's no errors in here so if we type in here, so we say unknown, we can say coder, we can say um, unknown 
at gmail.com. We can give it a birth date. And as soon as we do this, we should see the button turn to black. And if I click this button, it says go to the next page. So now we're ready to move forward once again and maybe actually start changing pages whenever we click the next button. Unfortunately, that's going to be it for today. If you guys enjoyed, please stick around for the next episode by hitting that subscribe button. You'll know exactly when it comes out, especially at that bell icon. If you did enjoy the content today, please sure leave a thumbs up. If you did enjoy it, leave a thumbs down. Either way, it helps out with the algorithm all the same. And finally, if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, make sure you leave a comment down below. With that being said, I appreciate you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Peace out, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.